Keep coming up. There we go. Nice. Perfect. It's gonna go. There we go. Hey guys, I've got a really fun one for you today because behind me is the brand new 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is the two row and this is a Trailhawk, which means we're gonna take it off road. So this is a shoot I've been super excited for because I am in the brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee about to tackle some Moab terrain. This is a Trailhawk, this is the off road model. I've got Alex Dykes filming me on the outside. Hey Tommy. What up dude, how's it going? It's going well. So Should the cameras look at each other? Hey TFL people. <laughs> Can you see the Alex and Autos people? I see you. You like his light? That's super yeah. professional. Oh, there we go. Is it up all the way? Yeah. yeah. Very professional. Very illuminating. All right. If I mess up, it's going on the internet. So this yes. is a lot of pressure. So now Jeep has set up this little off-road course, but they've actually done quite a good job with it. Unlike a lot of manufacturers set up off-road courses, I think we're going to see some pretty serious wheels in the air and some pretty good action out of this course, which is really, really great to see. So I've got the Jeep. Jamboree USA folks spotting me, they are incredible. I call this off-roading, but really it's just more following directions like a preschooler because they know these cars so well and they are not gonna put you in a situation that you can't get out of. Now, in this first obstacle, we are going to test the sway bar disconnect. Jess, you heard that right. This Grand Cherokee has a sway bar disconnect in a $59,000 SUV with ventilated seats and heated steering wheel. It has a sway bar disconnect, which I think is really very cool. Uh, gotta go a little bit more passenger here. Now straight on. So I'm one footed driving the Grand Cherokee now, seeing how the torque modulation is. This one is equipped with a 3.6 liter V6. We're gonna go nice and slow. Probably get the vehicle a little bit off kilter. This Jeep off-road video is brought to you by Onyx Off-Road. If you're heading out to Moab, Utah for some of the best off-roading in the world, it can be hard to know where to go, but Onyx Off-Road makes it easy. This app has everything you need from trail difficulties to what to expect out on the dirt. Let me show you what's going on here. So I've got these off-road pages and I can see not only my steering angle, but the uh, transfer case position. So we can see it's locked because I'm in low range locked, which means it's gonna probably distribute torque pretty evenly back to front. And then the rear diff says the rear axle locker unlocked. Now that's not a true rear diff lock like you'd find on a Wrangler. It's actually a limited slip diff, but it can simulate a locker and send, according to Jeep, a hundred percent of available torque to either the left or right rear wheel. Okay, my, uh, my tire is about three feet in the air right now. And now we're gonna pivot. There you have it. So, even though we do have the sway bar disconnect, we are still dealing with a vehicle that has independent front and rear suspension. So the articulation potential, you know, is still relatively limited compared to something like a Jeep Wrangler. But even still, it is amazing where you can go in this vehicle if you are willing to clench the cheeks just a little bit and <laughs> the tires in the air. Um, so one thing about the ELSD is it is a fully automatic system. So it does uh, the commands that it thinks it needs to get you unstuck using a sophisticated system of wheel, spent, uh, wheel speed sensors. Um, now that's cool, but I do wish there was an option to like manually kind of, you know, simulate a locker like on the Bronco Sport where you can push a button and have it locked. I think that would be a pretty cool setup, but uh, you know, it, it's doing its job, so why complain about it? It's it's really uh, distributing torque where it needs to go. And then in the front end of the vehicle, we have something called BLD or brake lock differential. So it'll break the spinning wheel and force power to the wheel with traction to get you up uh, gnarly obstacles using the front differential. So how do you tell a Trailhawk from a standard equipment Grand Cherokee? Well, starting in the front, we have these integrated tow hooks painted red, which means of course you're allowed to use them. If they weren't red, that'd be pretty dangerous. I kid, of course, but in reality, these took a lot of engineering because these have to comply with crash safety and crumple zone requirements. So they fold up under impact, but then if you need to recover, they are rated to 1.5 times the vehicle's GVWR. So pulling their strong and pushing their relatively weak, which is kind of interesting. Now it's got a different front end for five degrees more approach angle. Along the side here, Goodyear Wrangler Territory AT tires, 265, 60 R18. No rock rails on the side, unfortunately, but something you might be able to spec aftermarket in the rear, Trailhawk badging. You've got one recovery point back here and underneath, 
standard air suspension on the Trailhawk. So that's the only way you can spec this particular model. So let me walk you through the off-road controls on the inside of the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. So first of all, we've got the selectable terrain modes, rock, sand, mud, snow, auto, and sport. This is your drive selector. And over here, the different suspension heights, you change it by pushing this paddle up and down. Four-wheel drive low, so it's got the low range transfer case. You've got a basically speed control, kind of like a Toyota crawl control, and that ever important sway bar disconnect button, which is very cool. And the select speed control is configurable depending on how fast you want to off-road. On the instrument cluster, we have pitch and roll. And then in the center screen here, check this out. We have a front facing camera with a little cleaner. And even cooler than that are the off-road pages. Check this out. So kind of like Land Rover, you can see what the different, um, like for example, the rear differential is doing. It says rear locker unlocked. It's not really a true locker, but you can see accessory gauges, pitch and roll, what the select terrain mode is set up in with a cool animation. Tom, do these vehicles have rock rails or any kind of rocker protection? No, okay. no, these are completely stock vehicles. Gotcha. And what about skid plates? What did you do for skid plates? The full underbody has 3 8 uh, steel throughout skid plates. Trailhawk, okay. that comes with the Trailhawk and the Overland off-road packages, full skid plates. And is that on the front fuel tank and transfer case? Yeah, it's oh, it's front, right. side, all, it's all the way through the whole underbody. The MSRP on this Grand Cherokee, in case you're wondering, is $59,000, which would be a lot of money to jam into a rock. So I do, I do not want to be that guy that takes out a quarter panel on one of the few Grand Cherokee WL Trailhawks in existence right now. I don't think a lot of folks are gonna take their $59,000 Grand Cherokee over stuff like this, at least not initially. Cool. Passenger. Perfect. All right, you want me to go? Cool, yep, hard driver. Cool. This is very cool. So we've got a nice little ledge here and you're like right teetering on the edge of falling off with the front tire, which is there. And then we are going to two foot it, which is really good. <laughs> all right, all right. And this is, this is my Exxon Valdez moment. <laughs> Thank you, sir, I really appreciate it. All right, so we got this pretty gnarly little rock climb here. Alex is gonna attempt it in the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. And we shall see what happens. So that front right is gonna climb. Just enough ground clearance on this vehicle. Good work, Alex Dykes. Did you see that? On the throttle, crawling at the terrain. Alex. Practicing my two foot. Got to practice your two footing it here. You know, little, little break, little break foot, you know. Nice, dude. So there are two versions of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. There is the L, which is the three row. And then there's the standard one, which is just a two row. And that's what we're in today. Um, and this is the one you want for off-roading. So if you want the Trailhawk model, you have to get the two-row. Uh, there's no Trailhawk in the three-row. Thank you, sir. You do great. Appreciate it. I'm gonna need a change of underwear now. After I think what you're supposed to say, Tommy, is that there are two versions of Grand Cherokee. There's L and there's L free. L free. This is the L free version. So is there gonna be yeah, a 50% less L? Is it gonna in be this model. Is it gonna be a double L? No, no, it's just 50% less L in this model <laughs> only. That, I like yeah. that. And then of course there's the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. And that's a story for another day. So engine options, 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 or the 5.7 liter V8. The, the V6 makes 293 horsepower. The V8 makes uh, 357. Um, and then this model can tow 6,200 pounds. The V8 can tow up to 7,200 pounds. So actually pretty decent towing capability. You know, I gotta say I'm really impressed. The sight lines aren't as good as something like a Wrangler, even with the lower belt line. Um, but the steering is precise, but not twitchy. The throttle programming in four low is excellent. Now from an engine standpoint, the 3.6 and the 5.7 are nothing new. They are nothing fancy, but they are 
very functional engines that will get you where you need to go. Uh, the V6 with four-wheel drive comes in at 22 MPG combined, I believe. And then there's gonna be a four by E, a plug-in hybrid, which is uh, coming later, and that's the one I'm really stoked about. That's got about 25 miles of all electric range. And then of course, it's got a gasoline engine to supplement that. Um, but, uh, the 36 has been around forever and it's such a reliable unit. It really is a durable, durable power plant. Now I have to say the suspension is actually quite sorted. It's on the old WK Grand Cherokee. If you stuck the thing in the off-road 2 maximum off-road height, it just became a brick in terms of downward travel. But this is actually much better. You can genuinely drive along in the off-road 2 height without needing a chiropractor. The off-road one is even better, of course, I personally believe. And the sway bar disconnect is such a cool feature to have. But yeah, very impressed with the capability. You just couldn't do this in a Honda Passport or Ford Explorer. It just it doesn't have the clearance, it doesn't have the articulation, and most importantly, it doesn't have the gearing. And this vehicle has all three of those. So yeah, if you want the ultimate in 4x4 fun, but you also have a boat and a family and a wife that wants ventilated seats, the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk in the two row is a good option. Not all Grand Cherokees are created equally when it comes to four-wheel drive off-road capability. So what I'm in right now is a Limited, and this has the entry-level four-wheel drive system, the Quadratrack 1. So this is actually a single-speed transfer case, so there's no low range. I also don't have the air suspension, and this is going to be more of a road-going, snow-going equipped Grand Cherokee. Having said that though, even with these steel springs, the ride quality is really good. I'm very impressed with how soft and compliant it is. Now I don't have the same approach angle as like the Trailhawk, I also don't have recovery points in the front. So you wouldn't really wanna take this model into um, anything too serious because not only you not have the gearing for it, but you also don't have the, uh, the recovery point. So if you do end up getting stuck, um, you know, recovery could be a problem, especially from the front end of the vehicle. However, if you are interested in just doing dirt roads or, you know, super mild trails to get to the cool trailheads, I think the Quadratrack 1 entry-level four-wheel drive system is probably enough for 90% of people. It really does quite well, and even with the V6, um, the torque is pretty good with the 8-speed automatic and first gear, so you can crawl over more stuff than you'd expect. So is the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk a substitute to a Wrangler off-road? No, but it is incredibly capable for what it is, which is a 6,000 pound towing luxury lined SUV. And if you want to take it into some cool mob terrain, you're more than welcome to. The Trailhawk is definitely the one to go for if you're looking for those fun off-road adventures. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to go back to tfloffroad.com for the latest and greatest in new SUV reviews. Dude, Brian, yeah, fun. killer, thank Dude, you, sir. Love it, man. Can you give a shout out to what you do? Uh, nonprofit Military Mobility, we're a 501c3 that specializes in off-road expeditions and resiliency training for veterans. Thanks very much. Brian, thank you. Yeah, you are have doing a killer job out here. The Jeep Jamboree guys, like you just follow pointers and you end up where you Jeep wanna Jamboree go. Jeep Jamboree USA rules, all right. Thanks very <laughs> Thanks, much. Thanks, dude, appreciate it.